for the for the years in which I've been involved in J two B L two eighty three and just J two B research in general, which is not as many years as uh, some of the other researchers like uh, Chris Rotensteiner and Flora Vesely. Um, uh, but since since I've been in, in, in uh, following it, um, we've only had two. Neolithic age ancient samples that were J2B that have been found. Two. Uh, one, uh, the oldest, which is a J2B, he split J2B, and, uh, and his, uh, his closest relative is a guy from Uzbekistan. That, that sample um, is from Tepe Abdul Hossein. It's 10,000 years old and it's pre pottery Neolithic. Uh, he would. They were goat herders, if I recall correctly. Um, uh, but they lived in houses. Then the next oldest sample is uh, is not J two B basil or like um, negative for all other branches. It's a sample in a nowadays quite rare branch of J two B called Z two four five three. This branch is doesn't get much love from uh, from you know people that are interested in writing articles and Facebook groups because there aren't as many people in it. Um, um, uh, so uh, this group, anyway, this ancient sample is the second oldest J2B. So they're lucky that uh, even though there aren't very many of them alive today, that the, they have the second oldest ancient sample. Well, until what I'm about to tell you, which you might already know about. Uh, uh, oh, anyway, that ancient sample is from um, Haji Firuz Tepe, which uh, I think it's near near Lake Urmia. Um, I think it was 8,000 years old, approximately. Now we have uh, exciting from it's not it's not that new, but uh, in May we already knew about it. Uh, a sample is the the is 10,000 years old has been found from Georgia to be J2B. And uh, the exact, um, and it's from a cave where an ancient J2A was found called Cotias Clade. It's near the city Sveri uh, of Chiatura in Imereti province. And just the weird thing is I've been to that cave um, and I didn't even have any idea that any of my ancestors could have been living there because there wasn't any evidence for it. Um, J2B is almost non-existent in Georgia today. Um, so this is, it's really interesting that uh, we have it now, now the two oldest samples of J2B are from Tepe Abdul Hossein and from Cotias Clade in South Caucasus. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, okay, the exact branch, uh, with the exact branch, we will wait to talk about until the data is released. But it's a it's a very old branch that's extinct now from J2B. Um, this sample from Georgia. What's the implication for uh, the origins of J2B L283? Well, the implications are 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 pretty big uh, because. Prior, I, I, the way I see it is a door is opened that it, it means there's a real circumstantial possibility that if we get a little bit more data that we might be able to say with some reliability that the L283 branch originated in the West or North Caucasus um, because there's also the, the basal J2B L283 ancient sample from North Caucasus from uh, Cabardino Balcaria, KDC 001. Uh, so it's, uh, it opens, it opens this window that, 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 I mean, I think, I think uh, the, it was still a possibility to be considered that this is the ancient deeper origin prior to having found this ancient sample NEO 281. That's the ID of the guy from, uh, Cotias Uh Sure, this you could have taken this into account 
before that sample was found, but I didn't think about so much because I'd rather I'd rather just look at where we have ancient samples found. But now we have ancient, and so before then, the only ancient samples were from Western Iran, uh, and not even that far from one another in Western Iran. Um, so I didn't really I didn't really uh, think too much about uh, considering origin elsewhere for other branches of J2B because the oldest samples were all from there. Um, but now we know that 10,000 years ago there was J2B in uh, the, w the West Caucasus. Um, yeah, Georgia is, sp is split between, you could say, like uh, Western Georgia and Eastern Georgia. Geographically, there's a mountain range going, going, going through it. And uh, usually it's, it's determined political boundaries because it's not easy to extend force on the other side unless you have a power base on the other side, too. Um, so, so they've been found in Western Georgia and, uh, uh, what will be really important to, in interpreting this and, and, and having better circumstantial evidence, um, uh, regarding origins of J2BL283 and where, where it diversified first, uh, is we're waiting on another ancient sample, uh, from Moldova. Or Moldova. Um, so we have to wait for the sample from Moldova because it's going to be extremely important to our theories whether this sam ancient sample from Moldova uh, was positive for every SNP of L283, meaning fully formed, or maybe he's even younger branch. Uh, of JL283, or maybe he splits JL283. This is something that I, I don't think anybody knows yet, or it hasn't been publicly made yet. And so we need to, We this is going to be like the kingmaker of whichever hypothesis, or at least it's going to whittle down certain uh, alternatives. It's going to, it's going to exclude things. This is how we, we, we make theories and revise and refine our theories as we exclude we exclude them. As time goes on, some of them are shown to not be possible or be unlikely, and they are excluded. And this is how we refine our theories and get and and get closer to what we think is the truth um, of where our ancestors came from and where they went. Um, the other oh other piece of uh, of circumstantial evidence I think is worth taking into account. Um, when thinking about the ancient origins of uh, J2B L283, is that uh, okay? The different branches that are living today of J2B, uh, they each have uh, some fairly different kind of uh, geographic distribution, but all of them, except for JL283 have a presence in Arabia or Iran or both. J2B L283 is the only one that doesn't have any samples from Iran or Arabia. Uh, so I think that this could, maybe the, maybe the reason why is uh, if the ancestor was living um, on the other side, on the western part of this ancient distribution of where J2B had been living in ancient times, that would be one explanation why none of the J2B L283 ended up further east in Iran or, or in Arabia. Uh, like um, a, a lot of there were a lot of migrations in the Bronze Age coming from Mesopotamia and a lot of other J2B lineages got got involved with this is what it looks like uh, and that took them all over the Middle East but this didn't happen with J2B L283 so maybe they were not near there maybe they were on the other end of the spectrum all the way to the west maybe if they were in the Caucasus that could be one explanation why they don't show up in Iran or the Arabian Peninsula or, or you know, uh, Mesopotamia. But that's just circumstantial 
evidence, and uh, we will have to see where additional ancient samples are found, or if we find living men from certain areas that split some of these oldest branching points. Uh, if you've been following J2B L283 research for a while, you may already know that I have a website where I, I write some articles about certain um, advance, uh, advances in research, uh, new branches found, and uh, a lot of the articles I write are about J2B L283, but I write about other haplogroups too, um, also people that um, consult me for advancing their male line origins research. But uh, I decided just the other day to make a dedicated J2B L283 portal page. So I'm going to be writing more uh, articles just on uh, topics of interest to J2B L283 uh, that you can only find on that page. And then my main page will just have the most important things about J2B L283 that other people from other travel groups might find interesting. But if you want to see more detailed stuff and like how, who we're looking for to test in a particular surname from a particular region, because we want to establish the deeper roots of one of our male lines with a particular surname in a, in a particular region, because this this when we do this in many different branches uh, in many different areas, then we get a better picture of where the ancient ancestor of each of the lines have been living. And what we want to know is, uh, okay, if if the deeper origin of one of these lines is in the Western Balkans or Central Balkans or or maybe in Italy for some of these lines, we're interested to know, okay, when did they migrate from there to wherever else that we might trace our descent to now? Like my line is from Belgium, from Flanders. And I'd like, and it would be interesting to know uh, when did they my did my ancestor migrate there? So uh, in some cases where we have had some success in testing SNP for someone that's the same surname as somebody else, if they don't have any matches yet, then you need to look for match. You need to you need to make your matches. I mean, by aggressively finding someone with your surname from your same uh, ancestral origin of your male line to test and then then you can confirm that yeah they are your 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 surname does go back on your male line some hundreds of years if, if you can find someone to test to confirm it a lot of us don't have str matches don't be discouraged about that that's just how it is we can find them If you don't have any STR matches, or your only matches are at uh, unreliable level of 12 or 25 STRs, uh, sometimes uh, 37 STR matches that show up in uh, family tree DNA uh, are not actually reliably closely related to you. It's just by chance that you might end up being matched. But if you if you don't have any matches, it doesn't mean that your paper trail for your male line ancestor is wrong. Um, the only way that 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 on its own, no matches at all, would be would be wrong would mean that your paper trail is wrong is is if another man who has the same paper trail as you is confirmed to be a different male line, not related to you at all in the male line, and if he has reliable all of his str matches or by snip testing they're a different haplogroup but they all say that they're from the, some ancestor that you also claim descent from okay now you might be able to exclude that you're related to those guys if they did good work on their genealogy and they really all do think that they come from some ancestor there and there's a lot of them they're distantly related then they wouldn't all actually be descended from him just by chance uh, unless they really were and then in that case it's more likely that you are the one that's not actually descended from that ancestor that they claim and that you claim uh, so uh, but barring that let's say that uh, you you have a paper trail and uh, you don't know anybody else who also 
has that same paper trail as you, just some common male line ancestor. No one else has tested. You don't have any matches. Uh, so what that means is maybe it's true. Maybe, maybe your paper trail really is true. It just it hasn't cannot be confirmed or denied yet because nobody else uh, has has been confirmed to be closely related to you. Uh, so yeah, in that case, uh, you're from a very rare line. You're from somewhere where people just don't do DNA tests. Why DNA tests? Or they're just extremely rare. And um, uh, but everything is a. The reason why you should have hope is it's not just an either or. It's not like oh, you either have a ton of relatives or you have no relatives. Everything is in a probabilistic distribution or uh, statistical distribution. Uh, as more people, as more people test, someone who's on the cusp of finding their relative, like someone who doesn't have a relative and then finds a relative, this transition always happens from having zero to finally finding one over time you're more likely to finally have this relative of yours do a test. So it's just a matter of time. And just because you haven't had found any relative, STR relative in some years, five years, six years, 10 years, uh, eventually relative will be found. It's just a matter of when. For those with no close STR matches, uh, if you have done uh, 37, 67, or 111 uh, uh, STRs, that is in YSeq, uh, alpha, beta, alpha, beta, gamma, or alpha, beta, gamma, and delta STRs, uh, it would be, it is sometimes possible uh, to predict from the STRs which haplogroup is yours so what what i what that means is um w you don't have any close relatives but your str still could have this signal that betrays your ancient ancestor because you might have one or two or three or four or more of your str alleles may be the same uh as another group of men who you still are very distantly related to them but if you have some rare alleles in common with them then uh this could be an indicator of more recent common descent with those men and what that means is even though they're not closely related to you they're somewhat more closely related to you than you are to other people and uh so by this in this manner analyzing the strs uh using a tool i developed uh uh, together with uh, with collaboration with YSeq, with uh, Thomas Kran and Yaya Alali, um, it it helps visualize which rare STRs, how many of them, and how stable they are. You you have in common with some other men, and then uh, we can make a I can make a prediction. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty clear. You you're probably more closely related to these men. And then if any one man of this group has done some SNP testing that will confirm which branch you're in, then you might, the prediction might be that you are all in that one branch, even though only one of you did a SNP test to confirm it, we might assume that the rest are in it. And then we can verify this prediction by just doing a single SNP test for $18 YSeq. This is how uh, I advance the origin into J2BL283 uh, lineages. I try to look for people who, based on the test they've already done, STR test, uh, uh, that I think that they might be in a rare branch or branch that would uh, split another branch and advance the research into our deeper origins.